part one, mold in your health, where we talked about uh, um, how mold uh, impacts your health and some of the problems. And I'll, I'll do a little review, testing and inspection. And then what do we did to remediate our house? And so uh, this is my family shortly after we moved into our, our country home. It's my, uh, from left to right, is my, uh, my daughter, Jennifer, and my, uh, my wife, uh, Claudia. And that's, of course, me at the head of the table, and my son, James, and, and his wife, Rebecca. We all live on the same, uh, same property, 23 acres in, uh, in north, northwest Georgia. And uh, very excited to be in our first country home. We lived in the suburbs all our life. And, um, and finally, uh, my son was getting married to Rebecca and said uh, that uh, he would just love it if we could all live together. And, um, and my wife, uh, I finally agreed to country living. She grew up in an apartment, so she, she didn't understand much why or uh, why we had to, kind of dragging her feet, let's just say. And, uh, but but uh, she loves it. And um, anyway, this is the house we bought. It was only a two-bedroom, uh, two-bath house. Um, it, was, it wasn't that old either. And, uh, and this is a picture of the, of the back of the house. And when we first, we first moved in and anyway, so, um, what had happened was that, uh, before moving in, uh, we had stored all of our, our, a lot of our books. We had like 40 boxes of books. We love reading. My wife uh, teaches English second language and, and stored them in my, in my mother's basement. And my, my mother had a problem with dementia. And uh, in order to save money, would wouldn't turn the heat on in the winter or the air conditioner in the summer, and uh, and all our books and all our many of our belongings got got uh, very moldy. Uh, I'm talking about like a, like a white fuzz on uh, growing on all our boxes, and and um, we never thought much about mold being a problem. I never never thought it was a, a big problem, but we uh, packed everything into uh, into our car into the truck, and we. We, and in the process, contaminated our, our cars with, with mold and and um, uh, and brought them into the house. And so, my wife uh, continued to to get uh, her health was was declining. And as we explained in the previous videos, not everybody who has a reaction to mold. Some people are, have no problems whatsoever whatsoever because the problem is mold lets off a, a toxin called mycotoxin, and you can't. People have uh, some people have. Uh, trouble processing or de detoxification of their of their uh, of their bodies and um, one of the indicators for that is the uh, mthfr uh, gene mutation single or double and you can get that done on 23 and me um, and uh, and figure out and then work with a with a naturopathic uh, doctor or a functional medicine doctor like like we did to figure out that uh, you're you're having problems with mold, and so the main symptoms of my, my wife was the inability to eat just about anything, uh, food, uh, many different foods, and she had to go on what's called a FODMAP diet, uh, F O D M A P diet, which is um, you can find a, an application on it. It has to do with digestibility of food. But anyway, to, in summary, she got she ended up losing lots of weight and got very sick, even to the point of anxiety attacks. And so, um, and so this is our house we looked like before we put the, uh, sorry, we moved in and my wife's health was in steady decline. And that same time we decided to put an addition on the house because there's only two bedroom, two baths. And so my, my son and my daughter-in-law live in a, live in a one bedroom, uh, apartment with their, uh, in the bottom. And then we added an extra bedroom on the top. And so, um, this is what the house looked like afterwards, practically just double the size of the house. And uh, this is when my uh, my wife's uh, health just started uh, started really really deteriorating to the point where uh, where we, we needed help. Uh, she she was uh, shortness of breath, and uh, also another thing too. Um, we, we, there was um, there was a problem with mold underneath our uh, our dishwasher. I explained later with the, with a, a heating vent underneath which was blowing air underneath the dishwasher uh, <clears throat> into the into the house. Because it wasn't vented out underneath the cabinet to the front of the cabinet, it actually was blowing across the floor as mold was created. It, it dried the dried the mold and blew the spores all through the house. Plus, uh, the uh, moving of all the uh, the, the furniture that, and the mold that was um, the covering the boxes into our house also uh, was another big problem. Another problem too: the house had a very problem with um, being very humid inside all the time. I think it was just very tightly built. And we would have the window sweating, and that's very bad. You could have mold growth from that. And uh, another issue too is my wife uh, would travel to to a, a city 
um, uh, Marietta, which is was down south from us, and many of her cl our clients, English second language, lower lower income uh, people, apartments had mold moldy apartments, and so her so this these are all these made her uh, 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 very very sick, and so uh, uh, these are some of the other things that allergy can cause. I mean, mold can cause that people maybe uh, every some most people in the house maybe may be fine, but some people may be very very sick from the same from that mold and allergies, upper respiratory infections, flu-like symptoms, sleep disorder, itching, throat, eyes, and skin, chronic aches and pains, fatigue, vertigo, sin uh, sinitis is my, my, uh, my son didn't get it, no, no real problems. My, my uh, daughter-in-law had an issue with sinus infections. My mother, uh, memory loss, uh, her, her house, because it was full of, it was a very musty, moldy house. We tried to get her out, but she wouldn't get. And now, and now she's uh, an Alzheimer's patient. So you got to treat this very seriously because it there is such thing as a mold uh, mold induced uh, dementia, uh, and so um, asthma and headaches. My daughter was had had headaches. Uh, I had a terrible problem with clearing of my lung, a lot of infl inflammation in my lungs, and so um, we worked with uh, a functional medicine doctor, is an Adventist uh, in California, on the phone, video conferencing. And was able to, to prescribe a detoxification protocol. And um, his name is Dr. Wes Youngberg. And uh, he's very good. Uh, I don't know if he's accepting new patients, but he, but he certainly can make recommendations. Uh, he's done a lot of work with Alzheimer's patients too. And so, um, and then we also, uh, we, we, we were listening on the, on the uh, internet. And this man here, Dr. Greg, uh, you know, doctor, I'm sorry, uh, Greg Weatherman. He's a specialist in, uh, in mold, uh, uh, basically a, a mold consultant, and he's um, at um, survivingmold.com. Uh, and I'm going to, at the end of all this, I'm going to post some links, some of the things I'm talking about. And so he gave us some, a recommendation. He, he, we actually flew him in from Washington, D.C. And, um, uh, and, and had him give us advice on how to remediate our house from, from the mold. And so um, this is uh, some of the... Uh, this is actually the report that uh, he uh, he gave us, um, and this was a way we it was it was cheaper for us to fly him in and do the uh, and and do the uh, uh, inspection and and give us a remediation plan that we could do ourselves and hiring somebody come in and do it for us. And so um, it mentions the ERMI test score and the Hertz me test, which we discussed in the previous. These are these are tests you could do for mold, and you have not the only one. But uh, with, this is with the Swiffer cloth uh, test to test mold in your house. And um, it says some physicians use these test methods for assessing mold exposure to include asthma and other health effects from mold. Okay, so um, anyway, uh, and this is uh, was worth uh, going over here. Um, this says here that, uh, uh, let's see, uh, we got the bar up here blocking our way. Oh, good, I can move it down. <clears throat> so this is a remediation plan and just bear with me while I read through this. And then uh, we'll, I'll show you what we, I'll give you pictures of everything, uh, what we did. Number one, remove small contents needed in each area to be remediated or cleaned. So this, this basically means where we have to empty out our house. Um, it is better to remove small contents to avoid cross-contamination of forming remediation or demolition activities. Contents should be bagged and removed to clean outdoors. Contents except paintings and photos should be clean with dilute ethanol, such as plain vodka diluted to 10% for surface cleaning. Vodka is normally 80 proof or 40% ethanol with water. Add three parts of water to dilute to 10% ethanol. Um, not, not bleach, ethanol. Um, paper documents can be very difficult to, to decontaminate, and so we lost all our books. Uh, and run the largest risk for cross-contamination when moving without care. Contents should be clean to the extent of no odors or visible re residues. If you have something that smells musty, that means it's moldy, okay? And so uh, use of products with fragrances or chemicals with strong odors should not be used. My wife is very chemically sensitive. Contents should not re-enter the structure until each area is remediated to include the HVAC system with ducts, and that's what we have to do. We have to remediate our uh, HVAC system uh, because we use flexible ducting. It has to be replaced because you can't get mold or, or, or uh, uh, that kind of contamination out of the nooks and crannies of flexible uh, ducting. Um, uh, the ducting that's made from metal and, and folded, uh, much, much more um, probability of success. 
air cleaning as described below, surface cleaning and sealing of poor surfaces. Uh, what that meant is if you find mold in an area where like a rafters or something or, or wood that you, or, or even uh, things where there's no, um, no airflow, these are the three things you gotta look for when there's mold. Uh, is a moisture, of course you have to get rid of the moisture, but, but a, when mold becomes a problem, when there's moisture and then when there's drying and when there's vo air velocity, three things. And this is what we had underneath the, uh, the dishwasher. We had moisture from the water leaking. We had drying from the air vent and velocity. And those things contaminate, contaminate the air. So if you have, uh, behind, let's say, for instance, behind a wall and you have two by fours that, are, uh, that have mold on them, you don't have to pull them out and replace the two by four. You could just take a, a dilute, diluted wood glue and, that would, and, and, and paint it and that would seal it where, where it, will, it will not be a problem. Dem uh, number two, demolition of each area should be done with appropriate engineering controls to prevent further contamination of indoor space. That means put up plastic. If there is a place where you got a lot of black mold, like our kitchen, put up plastic uh, around the, with tape to keep the, uh, the mold. Because when you, when you open up areas that have mold, like we did underneath the dishwasher, it, it just spreads everywhere. And so if you try to just keep it uh, localized, you'd be much better off. The minimum engineering control is a negative air machine adducted to the exterior position to localize exhaust, even if there is no negative air pressure differential established. It basically means uh, some kind of a, a fan with, um, they, they have these um, uh, remediation machines where you, uh, we, we actually didn't, didn't do this because we were going to do our, we, we uh, just um, made sure that, because uh, we were going to do the whole house, so it didn't matter if it, if it spread for us. Uh, we were going to clean the whole house with it with the alcohol. All bare gypsum boards should be taped. We made sure we did that and floated and primered as part of the cleaning process if located along external assembly or, or wall. Bare drywall may cause misleading um, uh, test results. Okay, uh, finally here it says um, the listed problems should be addressed before cleaning the whole structure described as document. Content should be removed without aerosoling mold that may be hidden. Books are very difficult to clean um, from, uh, uh, I don't know what that means, pro uh, proteomic uh, view, I don't know what that means. Small particles due to porosity and gravity crevices. The best cleaning method is to gently agitate with air outdoors and wipe dry with Swiffer cloth. We ended up having to get rid of uh, a lot of our books. And so, uh, um, so anyway, um, first step in remediation is you, uh, my wife for, to finally turn around her health was get out of the house. And um, some people uh, uh, move into a tent in, in the backyard and live in a tent or or a camper, and so we uh, we got this um, this uh, uh, trailer, and you might and it was a new trailer too, and you think well it's kind of expensive. Well, what we did was we got a, a you can get a long term loan on it, uh, and I think even up to ten years on these trailers, brand new. If you could, my wife was so worried about about getting a trailer to being contaminated or or people not taking care of it so we ended up uh buying this and we ended up selling it afterwards for, for a very good uh price because the prices on trailers went up actually after we bought this and so um noticed um it had a green certification this is a uh, coachman apex which means uh none of the um the cabinets in it were any press board or anything like that so there wasn't any uh formaldehyde and it used um uh this asdel board which wasn't um which was a type of board, which uh, sort of like plastic, uh, imperviated, so uh, permeated, so it wouldn't um, rot or anything. It got wet or anything. So we got one that was green certified, and, and Coachman Apex are green certified. And so we um, we were able to uh, to hook up the electric to it. We we hooked uh, hooked up uh, plumbing to it to for the um, for for the septic system. And then many place many homes have a have a. Um, what do you call it? It's called a, a, a clean out for your uh, for your your sewer system, and so we were able to tie into this with this T like this and use that for um, uh, for our, our trailer. And we and I noticed that we also had to put these boards underneath to uh, to raise the, to get it to be level. And my wife and I lived in this in, in this trailer for over two years while our house was while we worked on it part time ourselves uh, to get it to get it remediated. And so my, my son and I. Um, donned uh, Tyvek suits from Home Depot and a full mask. And those, 
those um, uh, these discs that that screw onto this uh, this full face mask. You can get we got these off on Amazon. Are rated for mold, and so we were able to work in a house and uh, and and clean and clean the house out. And, and so, unfortunately, one of the first things you got to do is uh, all your poor stuff, as we said, the remediation has to be thrown away. Our mattresses, our our uh, our, uh, our sofas. Um, it, it was it was very difficult, but but in a way, you know, a lot of some of this older stuff we need to get rid of anyway. We. I'm kind of glad it was a blessing in disguise to kind of do a purge and, and get rid of a lot of the older stuff that we had in, in the, in the house. And so uh, this is the air conditioning and heating system had to be totally uh, gutted out. They removed it. Fortunately, the, the ceiling had a, had a, a space and it was made with trusses. So it was easy to rip the, take the sheetrock off and get that all out of the house. And the air conditioning and heating uh, company came in and they, um, uh, they installed uh, all new, all new uh, ductwork in, in the house. Um, so this is from the remediation report. Um, they had a uh, uh, particular interest here is the uh, the window leakage. He said. He said, you know, you th these these uh, uh, windows were installed with no uh, flashing around the windows, and there's some leakage in the, in the windows. And he he knows that from the cracking around the window from moisture getting in and expansion. And so um, what we did was, oh, and this, this picture down here was my, uh, uh, my, my son is a hardwood floor uh, uh, install professional. He has a whole, his own business for hardware installation, hardwood installation. And the, um, the glue he used, the, he was um, the inspector, uh, Greg Weatherman says, the wood flooring was applied, uh, wood flooring was applied to the basement floor with allegedly waterproof ceiling. It was waterproof, but he was skeptical. But the, it's important that you can get mold growing underneath the hardwood floor if it's not inspect, uh, uh, if not installed with with waterproof sealant uh, coming up through the ground. And so, anyway, uh, we removed the windows, every single window in the house, to see if if there was mold in the and, and there was actually it was in the addition. And wasn't even a year old and already had been the windows had been leaking now in older houses they didn't use osb this is this is osb which is made in chips it means oriented strand boards and and if you could do your house in plywood it's, it's better if you were going to uh, build a house because it's much more resistant to water but osb once it gets into this state there's nothing you can do with it you can't you you, you got to get rid especially around the windows because there is velocity there. You have moisture. You have drying with the with the wind, and so it, way this way this happens is is that the the window is welded in the corners, and and water comes in through the screen, and and they 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 were saying there's only two types of windows: windows that leak and windows that are going to leak. And because of the expansion and contraction of the window, they, uh, even a fine hairline crack in the corner could start leaking uh, leaking water. And so this was a really bad one here where it started leaking water. And in the corners, and uh, and it's all had to be replaced. And so this is what we did. We we had the uh, the my son unfortunately unfortunately is very uh, good with um, with carpentry, and uh, and so he was able to cut out the old OSB that was contaminated with the mold, and and install um, install this uh, pressure treated plywood to make sure that we didn't have the problem. But one of the things that's very very important is the. Um, uh, is the installation of the flashing around the window, and this is a picture of it uh, of it being done right here, where where you get the it's a, it comes in a roll, and the, there's um there's actually a, a an industry standard from the let me just get it here it was from the uh, uh, the American Agricultural Manufacturers Association, and I'm gonna just put this in the in the chat real quick here. Let's see if I got the chat here the chat put all these links in here right now. So we won't forget. There we go. Anyway, and there's a YouTube video you could watch and how it's done, uh, how it, uh, the process of, uh, of, of applying that, um, uh, that this, uh, how to install this flashing. It's, it's basically, it's a, it's a roll of, uh, of, of, of uh, like asphalt, uh, flexible rubberized, and you put it around the windows and you seal it. It's sealed it in, in the in, in this is what it's called it's for the flash but there's many different brands in fact you know what i'm going to do i would love for you guys to just everyone just to see this uh real short i know we're running short on time here i'd like to just to show you really quick here um how this is uh how this is done uh, 
That goes in the window corners. We're going to prepare the Tyvek for what's called a modified eye cut. We use a square of the SAF membrane that we have, and we create 45 degree angles directly above the rough opening. This is so the Tyvek can be cut and lifted up at the top. Cut your Tyvek with a razor knife, the way you see here. This is called your modified eye cut. It's held up at the top and it rolls in at the two sides in the bottom. Here's probably the most important part I want you to see is how these lower corners are prepared using caulking and this uh, corner piece. Now we're going to place sealant at the lower corners and then we'll place our lightning flash corners into the sealant and pop a staple into them in preparation for our waterproof membrane application. And this is the way your lightning flash corners will look after you've placed them. Okay, I'm going to fast, always, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Our membrane flat onto the substrate. Now we take two square CY here in just a second. Now you see Effie and Percy placing our nine inch membrane square that has the slice in it correctly into place. This is about the most difficult cut and fold that you'll have in the entire process. But when it's correctly done and layered into place, it looks great. This is an excellent way to create an end dam for your membrane pan. And with that lightning flash corner in place, you have a very strong assembly. The window can sit on top of that and the membranes will not tear. Take care of the opposing corner the same way you did the first, then you'll be ready for the next steps. Okay. Here's another corner that looks just great. That's basically what's what you can watch the whole video. But if you're gonna put if you're gonna uh, uh, put new windows, make sure you flashed them properly. And then, um, or what we did was is we went around the whole house and removed every single window and put flashing on because none of the windows had flashing on it. But you, if you notice, uh, if you ever go to new construction, you'll see this being used quite a bit. I noticed around here in the, in the Atlanta, uh, Georgia area that that it is it is being used. And so here's there's the start of us uh, using ours. Ours was also in black. Ours was uh, had had some printing on it. And so um, how to clean the inside of the house? We removed all the books. We removed uh, all our furniture, and and now we uh, we started using uh, this product called from Aero Solver, and, and the link is in the is in the chat. And this uh, um, Aero Solver says advanced technology for cleaning indoor air, and it, we use this uh, this fogger, and um, this uh, fogger here was um, uh, you, you purchase. Uh, I sent a link for it also. And what you do is you fill it up with this with this liquid that's uh, from uh, AeroSolver. And what it's uh, it's expensive, one hundred thirty dollars a gallon, but but a, a, a little goes a long way. And what you're doing is non toxic, and you're fogging the whole inside of the house. And what it does is it attaches itself to uh, to mycotoxins or mold in the air, and it drops it to the floor. Then after that, you clean the floor and all the surfaces with the, that vodka and, um, and and water mix using this uh, aero solver. Now, there's other ways of, of remediating that uh, this is a, a very non-toxic, clean way. And one of the main things with the re remediation is, is, is um, cleanliness. You're trying to clean the house completely with no with no uh, um, gaps in the in the sheetrock, or uh, and you want everything sealed and cleaned. And, and this is a, uh, but, but there are other ways too with ozone I've heard is very good too, which I don't have any experience with it, but this is just the way that, that we used, that what we used to, uh, to remediate the house. And so um, uh, the one thing to really look for, look for is the, um, is dryers to make sure when you reinstall them that the, uh, the duct work is, uh, is sealed because it is a breeding place for, uh, for a moldy environment. It has all three, three, um, uh, ingredients for, for uh, mold uh, toxicity, and that is moisture from the clothes being dried, uh, uh, drying, of course, because it's drying, and number three, air velocity. And so if you're leaking uh, lint 
into the house, you, you could just be a, a source of mold. But um, so the, 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 uh, the um, Greg Weatherman, the consultant, noticed that there was water damage has occurred under the dishwasher impact impacting the plank flooring and this is where where the major major problem in our in our house was was the uh uh was was the water damage and so um we had decided uh that we were going we we ended up removing the uh the, the whole cat the whole line of cat cabinet because it, it molded crawled up the got no and it, we didn't we didn't want to risk uh, and my wife too. This has to do with more of a. It ends up being a a mental uh, condition because you, you're. My wife became very uh, afraid of, of mold and and uh, and to calm her, we we uh, said, okay, we're going to replace the whole cat line of cats. And my son built these. Like I said, fortunately, is good at uh, um, good at building uh, and, and carpentry. So we was able to put these uh, uh, new cabinets in. And uh, we were finally able, after uh, uh, some intensive work on the house, get rid of the trailer and uh, and move back into our house. Praise God! So it was a successful remediation. Um, this was the old uh, the old what the old kitchen looked like, and um, we and now now this is what it looks like. Now we were able to get rid of uh, uh, basically all the cabinet doors were replaced, and the, on the one on the right, all the that that was all all completely new and put up uh, that brick uh, backsplash. Um, this was a picture of the old dingy uh, yellow color um, living room. And uh, you notice there was a window on the, uh, on the right-hand side um, that was, that was opened up. And this is where the, that's where the addition uh, is. Now we put a, put in a wood stove. And, um, and so we made the environment clean and, uh, and bright because it's very important for, for someone who's recovering from mold toxicity to have a, a new outlet. We moved the table position before the table was against the, uh, here we had to move it too. So we're trying to erase old memories uh, of, the, of, the, of the issues that, that my wife had. And so, um, uh, oh, uh, one thing, oh, this is my wife here. We, she went to her mother's in Brazil. My, mother, my, mother, my wife was Brazilian uh, for two months. Um, and then she came back, so we were able to surprise her and uh, and move into the and, and move into the house. And this is us back in a, into our new house, and we we're really happy with it. We've been in a year now, and so this has happened just just recently. And um, uh, one thing I just want to uh, say is that if you have to do something like this, uh, you know, people say, "Well, are you going to get all that money to do that?" You know, that's a very very practical question, but. We were we um we were have a had a, a mortgage on have a mortgage on our property. Our plan was to pay it off in seven years, but that's been delayed now. But we were able to uh, to actually um, when we rehab the house to uh, uh, refinance afterwards and uh, and pay and and uh, take some cash out to pay our bills. But what, what we had for this because the house value actually went up quite quite a bit after we did all this uh, this work in it, and so um, the house is done now. Uh, that's the addition on the right hand side. Um, we uh, we love living. I want to just conclude uh, this uh, saying that we we love living in a country, uh, even though we had all those challenges. You know, God does things for a reason. Uh, lets us allows things to happen for a reason, and uh, we're a lot less attached to material things than we used to be. Uh, living in a small trailer now, we appreciate every square foot of space that we have uh, in the house, and we live on a beautiful road. Praise God. And, um, uh, and when you live in the country, you could enjoy things like uh, we have a pond on our property. And my son as a birthday present for my wife when she came back is to uh, pour sand with a big dump trailer here by the pond, had a, uh, had a birthday for her because my wife loves the beach. And so we, we made a beach for her. And something you could never, of course, do in a, in a residential uh, residential area. So a lot of things. And we have, we, we have bonfires sometimes in the back. Um, this is me stacking up uh, some trees that we pulled out of the woods with my old 70, uh, 1971 Ford uh, tractor um, that we enjoy uh, bonfires together sometimes. It, it, it is just wonderful. You know, it, it's a lot of work living in a country. Um, you could have ch challenges with, with things like mold and other issues, but it's well worth it. So sometimes we eat out in the back of the house. We bring up these lights uh, celebrating my daughter-in-law's uh, birthday. Uh, garden area where we uh, where we actually um, actually use uh, uh, the grass for hay. Our neighbor comes over and, and does it for us, and then he just gives us some of the hay, and he takes the rest of it. So 
uh, beautiful, na wonderful neighbors. Um, this is all the neighbors in, in about a, a half a mile uh, uh, road. Um, we, that we're all together on the road here because uh, my, the, my neighbor, uh, John in the blue, from the top of his mountain was doing, uh, was shooting uh, some model rockets off and, and it came down into the valley and he was out looking for it. They were all looking for it. And so everybody's wondering what was going on. So we all were able to take this picture, very rare picture of all, us to get, all of us together. And so um, when you're in the country with others, you feel like you're in it all, all together. You know, and so so you all have a, such a, a, a lot in common. So uh, they all know that uh, that we're Seventh Day Adventists, and uh, the, the the gentleman in the upper right who does the hang, uh, his name is Jim Jones, Jim and Ginger Jones. That he says, uh, yes, well, I'll be coming over to do the hay, Jim, uh, uh, to, uh, tomorrow, but but uh, but not on Saturday, though. Don't worry, I won't be coming by then. <laughs> so they they all know uh, that about us and. Uh, and and our um and our church and so uh uh here's a, a night a beautiful sunset uh on our road with a couple of dogs and so I encourage you anybody um again to, to to move out to the country uh to not only prepare for the end times but also to enjoy some wonderful blessings that you, you just can't imagine are waiting for you <laughs> 